In recovery, you can get a long way once you find your motivation. You can make incredible steps once you decide what you're fighting for. And you can give the eating disorder a good beating. But what's the point in having this motivation when you can't translate it into a plan of action? What if you have forgotten how to eat after all of this time? Don't worry, you're not the only one. And in this video, I'm covering how to relearn how to eat, what, when, and how much to eat, and how to go back to a more intuitive pattern where you don't overeat or undereat or overanalyze everything. I'll be eating one of my homemade brownies as I record this. I hope you enjoy the video. Hi Warriors, Hannah here. As I just mentioned, today I'm going to be talking about what to eat, when to eat, how much to eat in recovery. But before I get into that, I wanna give a really, really, really quick shout out to today's sponsors. Ana Luisa. I've talked about them once before and I'm going to talk about them really briefly again because they're a jewellery company that I stand behind. I love their products and I love what's behind the products too. Ana Luisa design luxury jewellery items from $39. They offset 200% of their carbon emissions starting with the sourcing of their raw materials all the way to the disposal of their pieces. To me, something like that is pretty important and something that's often overlooked by other brands. What's more, their items are just pretty damn cute. And you can style them in so many different ways. The larger pieces I'd probably be wearing on their own, whereas the smaller ones I might pair with other fine piercings just to create my standard, typical, cluttered, chaotic Hannah look. I love it. I love all of them. These two earrings are earrings that I already owned. And I'm assuming most people have little ones like the one shown, but if not, obviously, Ana Luisa has some as well, if you want to recreate the Hannah look. Whether you'll be going out or staying at home in your comfy pajamas, look nice with some Ana Luisa jewelry. It's also a great Christmas gift and there's some Black Friday deals going, so I will leave a link for you all in the description and without further ado, let's get to the video. The first thing I want to cover in this video is relearning how to eat. In eating disorder recovery, you may actually forget how to eat. You are mentally suppressing your hunger and physically your stomach is shrinking because it's not getting enough food. As a result, your hunger cues become very, very unreliable. As a result, it's pretty much impossible to jump straight back into intuitive eating after struggling with an eating disorder, even if just for a short amount of time. Therefore, you might need a meal plan, or you might need to set yourself regular times at which you eat certain minimums. Of course, it's not a problem to eat more than those minimums, even if the eating disorder tells you it is. How much exactly should you eat? When should you eat? What should you eat? Well, if you stick to a meal plan, this is pretty straightforward. You'll probably have breakfast, a mid-morning snack, lunch, an afternoon snack, dinner, and then a dessert or evening snack. So for example, if you have your breakfast at eight o'clock, your snack might be at 10 or 11, lunch might be at 12 or one, your next snack at three or four o'clock, and then your dinner at six, night snack at eight, something along those lines. It's obviously perfectly fine to be flexible with your meal times, but especially if you're trying to re-regulate your hunger cues, it's really helpful to have this framework. It might also piece up the anxiety that the eating disorder is causing you because you know what to expect, when to expect it. Over time, as your body cues re-regulate, you won't be needing this meal plan anymore and your body will automatically start to send you hunger cues at these times, as it gets used to these times. Anyway, that doesn't really tell you how much to eat, does it? In recovery, it's generally recommended that you eat around 3000 calories. Nevertheless, I don't think it's that healthy to be counting calories. So you might want to do this with the help of a dietitian, or you might take a more trial and error approach, eating different amounts and seeing if this actually leads to the required weight gain. 
definitely discuss this with your team. In terms of what to eat, focus on variety. Focus on abundance. Never give in to that eating disorder voice and allow that voice of restriction to creep back in. Abundance is key. So eat different things, get a variety of nutrients. And if you don't know what you like or don't like, definitely revert back to some of your childhood favorites. There's a reason they were your favorites before the eating disorder. So give them a go now. You might not realize how much you've been missing them. If you don't really remember your childhood favorites or if your taste has really, really changed over the years, just again, focus on variety. Try different foods, new foods, and don't back away from a challenge. Face all of your fear foods and face them repeatedly because that's how you overcome them. And that's how you'll learn over time whether you crave them and you might for a while and then not for a little while after that, and that is perfectly okay. If you face your fear foods, those cues will start to make sense to you over time. Also, eat what others around you are eating. Even if it's not what you crave or what you like, tell yourself that sometimes it's okay just to eat socially. Sometimes it's okay if you opt for a meal that turns out you don't like all that much. Food is just food, and this process will teach you exactly that. Next, obviously, eat what you're craving. If you have specific cravings now, give in to them. And this might mean eating chocolate chip cookies or brownies for weeks on end. Keep going, because these cravings, they don't last, they'll change. If you give in to your cravings, the craving will be satisfied and it will evolve. Yes, it might be that you crave lots of sugary foods during recovery, but that is part of it. Your body needs these dense, high sugar foods for its recovery. But once you add a healthy weight, it might not have as much use for it. One last note that I want to mention about the when to eat. Obviously, follow your meal plan. Never skip a snack or skip a meal. But also, if you're feeling extra hungry one day, or if you're craving something after you've reached your minimums, eat that too. That's how your body learns that you will respond to the hunger cues it gives you. Creating more trust, allowing you to leave that starvation mode, allowing your metabolism to rev back up, and allowing your hunger cues to become more regulated. As a result, you'll then be able to eat more intuitively. You'll be much less likely to restrict or binge. And when you do, you won't beat yourself up over it. It does happen to everyone once in a while. Someone might overeat at a specific meal or they might be so busy that they forget to have a snack or a meal and end up being really hungry later and responding to that hunger. It's all okay because if you follow these steps you'll start to tune into your body more and your body will tune into you. That way you'll discover the beauty of food freedom and listening to your body and mind. Anyway, I hope that's answered some of your questions. Obviously, don't forget to check out Ana Luisa, link in the description. And also, don't forget to subscribe. If you subscribe, and if you like this video, you will get an exclusive chance to win loads of jewelry. That's not true, scrap that. Anyway, um, if you like and subscribe, there's one thing that you can win. My gratitude. I hope that's enough to incentivize you to subscribe. It really does mean a lot to me. It helps my videos rank. If you want to see similar content in the future, let me know below if you have any other questions, any other requests. Also let me know and I will see you next week for another video.